Hey y'all, welcome this time to the Kitchen Recording Studio. This is another poem of the day. Today's poem is Facing It by Yosef Komunyaka. Um, hope you enjoy it. I'm going to stick around afterwards for some bonus analysis that I'm going to be doing a little bit differently, so I will explain that when we get to that place. For now, this is Facing It. My black face fades, hiding inside the black granite. I said I wouldn't, damn it. No tears. I'm stone. I'm flesh. My clouded reflection eyes me like a bird of prey, the profile of night slanted against morning. I turn this way. The stone lets me go. I turn that way. I'm inside the Vietnam Veterans Memorial again, depending on the light to make a difference. I go down the 58,022 names, half expecting to find my own in letters like smoke. I touch the name Andrew Johnson. I see the booby trap's white flash. Names shimmer on a woman's blouse, but when she walks away, the names stay on the wall. Brush strokes flash, a red bird's wings cutting across my stare. The sky... A plane in the sky. A white vet's image floats closer to me than his pale eyes look through mine. I'm a window. He's lost his right arm inside the stone. In the black mirror, a woman's trying to erase names. No, she's brushing a boy's hair. All right, welcome to the bonus analysis section. I'll get into that in just a second, but I would like to say I'm starting a slightly new thing with this one in that I'm doing this, doing what's called cold reading of it, more or less. Um, I've read the poem before, like earlier this evening, but I had not read it before that. So I have not done like a lot of study about it. I've not done um, a lot of research or whatever. Um, I, I know of Yusuf Kumanyaka's poems, um, and they're all extraordinary, but um, I don't know this one very well, so I am going to be doing this sort of off the cuff, so excuse the stutters and whatnot. Um, and also I'd like to say too, before I get into it, I understand that my, black, my face itself is not black, and I mean that's the first line of the poem, so it's kind of disconcerting in that way maybe um, to hear me read it, and I'm sorry for that. Um, I have gone back and forth many times when I'm thinking about what to do for this channel, um, about whether the, my voice is the voice that you need to hear these poems from, and it's probably not, but I have, I think, want to err on the side of making sure people are familiar with um, these writers and these poets who are extraordinary, and I just wanted to share it with you. So, anyway, here's here's some analysis. Um, you have a lot of stuff going on in here. Um, I would pay attention if I were doing analysis of this um, to the colors and the light and the dark. So there's lots of images here that are dark. Um, you have the black face that I tried to underline and I don't have. Here we go. Um, let me make this smaller too. Alright, so you have the black face, you have the black granite, um, the stone. I mean, he says the word stone more than once too. Um, and you have smoke, that's a dark thing. You have a white flash there. You have um, the sky is a light thing, a white vet's a light thing, you have pale eyes, um, you should have the stone again, you have the black mirror, um, and I'm sure that I've missed some too. The profile of night has a couple of night images that slanted against morning. So the contrasts of light and dark um, are important here um, for lots of reasons. I mean, this is a black man who was a, a Vietnam soldier um, who... I mean, every all the Vietnam soldiers got kind of blackballed, excuse the phrase, but no, not treated very well when they came back from war. Um, but the black soldiers were worse, 
as you know in all things they were treated worse than their white compatriots and the white ones were treated pretty badly too so that contrast is going on you have the the vietnam veterans memorial which is exactly as he says giant black granite with just all the names of the people who passed away um who actually were killed in action um there um listed on them and it's it's a really overwhelming thing even for me to see um, much less somebody who actually fought in in the conflict so um and it's t- intended to be overwhelming at the same time so you have that large you know dark obelisk kind of thing um, it's like a wall almost and then you have you know the light in the sky you have the white soldier you have that kind of thing going on so the contrast between light and dark um, there's another light right there too um, is, is an important thing that you can dig into on this um, you also should notice here you have the sky which is blue you have a red bird which also um, it goes with the blood because um, I mean he you know that because he uses the word cutting with the red bird bird's wings they're cutting across the stairs so just in case you missed that it was a blood image that is uh, made it a little bit more obvious so you have blue sky red bird white flash within you know, five or six lines um, which is you know you have red white and blue going there too um, Andrew Johnson here you have um, it implies obviously in the next line that that this soldier was somebody that he knew um, in his own battalion or his own group um, and so he was there looking for his name. It is not an accident, I'm sure, um, given um, Yosef Kumanyaka's skill, that Andrew Johnson is also the name of a president of the United States as well. Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing, um, this poem. Um, let's see, there were other things that I wanted to say, too. Uh, you have this, this image um, at the end that contrasts with the one in the beginning right because the image you have at the beginning is um the the granite of the of the um memorial is black so um he is saying that when he looks at in a shine too it's got like a reflective surface kind of so when you look at it um the, the light reflects off of it um but he says he his black face is fading looking at the granite like it blends in sort of um in in the in the wall um, which makes sense because he was a soldier, and he says he half expects to find his own name there as well, even though he knows he's alive. Um, and then you have a black mirror at the bottom, and like in the last three lines, a woman's trying to erase the names, and she's um, implying, of course, that she's trying to erase her own son's name, um, but she's actually brushing her hair, so she's there, you know, touching it like that, um, which... Yeah, you're seeing different reactions um, to this thing. I mean, even up here you see the clouded reflection and that contrast with the clouds in the sky and that kind of thing down here. Um, so, yeah, there's lots and lots of things. I also wanted to point out right quick before I go um, up here, um, you have, he, ry- he has these hard sounds, um, like he's trying to constrict um, his emotions, which is what he's literally writing about, but he's also using the sounds of the lines to do the same thing. He has granite and wooden and damn it, and then the tea and stone too. Um, there's lots of really short sentences, um, and there's lots of um, fragments in here as well, um, sentence fragments. So look for those, um, which are almost like images flying in and out of his sight. Um, almost like memories flashing back as as he goes so i hope that helps as a starting point for an essay anyway um there's little pieces anyway to to pull out um there's obviously a lot more to this but um i think that's enough for now so um, take care of yourselves right now as i record this video we are living during a pandemic so wear masks if you go outside and wash your hands a lot and i will see you next time This Poetry Cold Reads video is a production of Thomas and Morris Instruction. The creators of this video would love it if you would like and share this video and subscribe to our channel to help us goose the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support.